Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about managing the inventories of machines using applied energistics. A problem that many people face is managing their industrial centrifuges. What's especially problematic is when they're centrifuging redstone dust and later they want to centrifuge something else in the same machine. This is a problem because redstone dust has a craft of 10 units in the industrial centrifuge. So if a full stack of items gets pushed into here, you can be left with only four items left when you're done and nothing else can go into the machine until it's manually replaced. The way we're going to solve this problem is by using two separate ME networks. On our primary network over here, we've got a few items stocked up. We've got some glowstone dust, some redstone dust, empty cells, and then ruby and helium dust, which are some of the outputs that you can get from glowstone and redstone. The way, we're, the way we're working with this is we've got an interface on our second network and an interface on our primary network, and we're using a series of export buses and level emitters to control the flow of items between the two networks. So the first thing we have here is an export bus which is exporting empty cells. And we want to do this anytime there's less than one cell in, in this second system here. And that's just to ensure that these always have a good stock of cells and that we don't run out so that we can't complete our crafts. Next we're using two more export buses. This one is going to export glowstone dust and this one is going to export redstone dust. Now they're only going to do that when they have a signal and we're signaling them from the other contents of our network. So we're going to send redstone dust if we have less than five ruby dust and we're going to send glowstone dust if we have less than five helium. So let's go ahead and give this a try and I don't have these plugged in so this is just a sample here so you can see how it will work. Go ahead and take our ruby dust out and you can see our redstone starts filtering into the other system. So if we come over here and look we can see we've got redstone in all of our industrial centrifuges here. All right, and now if this crafted down and crafted down, we had the amount we needed, normally this would cause a problem because we'd have four redstone left in each of these. Instead, what we can do is we can use export buses coming from our second system to send back any spare product that we have. So if we have the appropriate amount of ruby dust and we're ready to stop crafting, we'll go ahead and pull all of our redstone back out of that second system. Now, this is normally a challenge because you can only export from export buses and import from import buses. So how are we getting it back out? Well, we're using storage buses. By using a storage bus, we're actually treating the top or the center, in this case, inventory item in the industrial centrifuge as part of our network. So these are the storage on our network. And we can do that if we look at one of these with a wrench here. Oops, maybe we don't use a wrench on this one moment. <laughs> If we look at one of these, we can see that we're only allowing redstone and glowstone into these inventory slots. And you can program all of your storage buses in this way to dictate which items can go into them. So by doing that, we're saying we're only putting the items that we actually want to process into the top there. And the rest of our items can come into this chest over here that we also have hooked up to a storage bus. In this case, we're storing our empty cells in here so that we can later export them into the bottoms of these machines as they run out. You could, of course, also use storage buses on the bottom of these to store your empty cells, but there's really no need to since we can just export into them as we need to from our second network. So we've seen that we can put redstone dust in and take it back out, and let's do the same thing with our glowstone dust now. And there goes our glowstone dust processing into our second network. All right, and so this will be crafting out and, and creating whatever it needs to. And then at any time, whenever we got our appropriate amount of materials back in our parent network, any extra glowstone dust that was left in our industrial centrifuges will come back out. Now, do remember that with items like the industrial centrifuge, the item is used up immediately uh, as it begins to craft. So they will finish that last craft, um, and you will get those items out before uh, you know, any, any other items will be processed. So I don't actually have it set here, um, but you would of course want to export any of your materials back out into your parent network. Uh, and you would just do that through this export bus. You've got eight slots in here. Um, and so you can put out all the export items from your redstone and your glowstone dust. And if you had more items, of course, uh, you could add additional export buses. Um, and we're not limited in the number of interfaces either. So if we don't have enough room, uh, with one interface per network. We can, of course, add more of those. 
So that is all it takes in order to be able to appropriately manage the inventories of some of your machines with kind of odd crafting recipes. Uh, you'll want a primary network that exports the material based on level emitters. And you'll want a secondary network that treats those machines as storage and uses appropriately configured storage buses to put the items where you want them to go. And then whenever it's complete, you'll use level emitters that are on your parent network. Um, and these will be set to the opposite of the other ones. So uh, here, for example, we're emitting when we have above five helium cells. And here we're, ha we're emitting when we have below five helium cells. So we send when we're below, we pull back when we're above. And that is all you need to use your industrial centrifuges for multiple types of items. Thank you and have a great day.